So these are the top seven mistakes that newbies make before getting into the stock market. Learn to avoid them, do better. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and click the little alert notification bell so that you get alerted when I have new lessons that are gonna change your life. What's up, Tim Sykes Millionaire Mentor and Trader here with seven tips. Don't make these mistakes because number one, too many people get into the stock market, they risk their hard-earned money before they're ready. They haven't studied, they haven't learned, they just want hot money, hot picks, fast money, fast profits, that's not how this works. If you are truly gonna utilize the stock market to get rich over time, it's gonna take you time to get educated. You actually have two accounts. You have your knowledge account and your monetary account. And you have to grow your knowledge account, which means studying, clicking the links below. I have a lot of resources for you because I've been doing this 20 years. I don't want you being a newbie like most newbies lose money. I don't want that for you. So click those links. They're beneficial for you, but you're gonna have to use your brain. And build that knowledge account so that when you have enough knowledge, it spills over into your monetary account. And then you can actually have an advantage over everybody else because 90% of traders lose. It's due to lack of preparation. Don't make that mistake. Second, do not pay too much for commissions and don't use the wrong broker, okay? I use E-Trade and Interactive Brokers. They don't pay me to say that. I don't even think they're that great. I think they just suck the least. But too many people use high overpriced specialized brokers who promise you the world. They're not worth it. Also, there are brokers where it's just free commissions. They're like, look how amazing it is. And then you get screwed on executions. You save five or $10 on commissions and then you get a bad execution. There's also a lot of offshore brokers and prop firms and they all say, oh, you can get around the PDT rule. We have six to one leverage. Don't fall for those traps, okay? There are so many bad brokers. Again, I use E-Trade and Interactive Brokers. Neither of them are perfect. Interactive Brokers, their customer service is terrible. E-Trade really isn't that great at anything, but they're big and they're safe. So you need a broker to actually execute trades, but don't pay too much and also don't cheap it out because you're probably gonna get screwed. Third, also be very careful with the information that you get, okay? So I'm proud to be teaching because I've been doing this for 20 years. I actually did turn a few thousand into several million. I actually do have five millionaire students, most of whom was started with a very small amount. Tim Grittani, for example, my top student started with 1,500. He's now at nine million. I provide good information. Am I right all the time? No. Do I make mistakes? Yes. But I will be blunt AF about all of them, okay? I need to teach you what I know. I need to teach you from my losses, from my mistakes, and that way you get good, honest information from me. I can't guarantee you profits, but I guarantee you that I'll teach you everything I learned over the past 20 plus years. There's a lot of people who do not have experience, they don't have millionaire students, and they don't show all their trades, and they're not honest. You have to be very careful about getting bad information. A few years ago, penny stock promoters gave terrible information. People believed in these small companies. They might go up for a little bit while they were being promoted. Then they crash with no news when the promotion ended. And a lot of people were confused saying, oh, I thought this was a good company. No, you were just promoted to. These days, short sellers make it seem, well, all these penny stocks have such terrible fundamentals. They're doing warrants. They're doing financings. It's bound to crash. Yes, that's true, but a lot of these penny stocks go further. The short sellers are not talking about their losses or the risks that they take. So be very wary of bad information. It can cost you a lot more. That is actually the biggest potential expense that you have. Bad information costs so much time and money. Don't fall for it. Four, do not be emotional when you're trading, okay? I know it's exciting, you wanna make money, I know it's scary when you're losing money, but if you can learn to be disciplined, that's what this is about. When I have a loss, I don't say, oh damn, I'm so disappointed, oh, woe is me, let me start taking tequila shots. No, I cut my losses and I say, hey, that's part of the game. Again, this is where 20 plus years of experience comes in. I've seen good trades, I've seen bad trades, I've seen everything in between, so I have proper expectations. But when you're first starting, you have no idea what to expect. These stocks can move faster than you think, and it's fun if you're riding it. It might be very exciting. Your heartbeat starts going. You're like, yeah, this is amazing. This is a roller coaster. And you might make a lot of money, and it's dumb luck. That is not a good way to make money because it's gonna come back to bite you. If you're dumb, you will not have lasting wealth. If you stay ignorant, yeah, you might have some fun. It's like a roller coaster. But what goes up 
also comes down. And I know too many people who make too much money too quickly, like a lot of Bitcoin people, and they say, this time is different. I don't need to trade by any rules. And then they lose half or they lose it all. I don't want that. Don't be a gunslinger. Stay emotionless and stay disciplined. And trust me, it gets easier over time. Five, with short selling, you're actually taking a negative position on the stocks, meaning that you're actually taking out a loan from your broker. You're borrowing their shares and you have to pay an interest rate. It's usually not a lot of interest, especially if you're only shorting for a few hours or a few days. But if you're shorting long term, the interest can add up. Also, it's risky. With short selling, you can lose more than you put in, right? If you buy a stock at $3 a share, 1,000 shares, let's say, you put in $3,000, it goes to zero, you lose 3,000. But if you're shorting a stock at three, 1,000 shares, the same $3,000, and it goes up to 12, you're now down 9,000. Triple what you put in. So your debts don't just go away. They actually turn you over to like a credit collection agency. It's terrible. So I know a lot of short sellers who don't recognize the risk. I know a lot of these companies deserve to go to zero. I know that a lot of these companies are worthless and their fundamentals are bad, but there's too many short sellers these days and they're creating these gigantic squeezes. So not only in my mind is it a flawed strategy, it's hugely risky, especially to newbies. So be extra careful. Rule number one, cut losses quickly. When you're shorting, understand that you're borrowing the shares, understand that a lot of other shorts have borrowed the shares and a short squeeze is possible where you can lose more than you put in. Number six, see what time of day it is, okay? I rarely ever trade midday because you don't get that many big moves. You get a lot of choppy stocks, a lot of frustration will happen if you have midday trading. I know, I know, sometimes there's breaking news, sometimes you wanna trade midday, especially if you have a busy schedule, but the two best times to trade is near the market open and near the market close. That's when it's more predictable, that's when it's more volatile, you need to understand these different times of day. Or you could ignore me, be like most newbies, trade midday, get involved in a lot of fake outs, be very frustrated and quit trading. Don't do that, come on, be better. Learn to focus where there are high odds profits on go-to patterns and at the beginning and the end of the day. Again, remember to click the links below this video. I'm giving you resources that will only increase your odds of success. If you ignore them, you will likely lose. I'm not perfect, but I have learned a lot over 20 years. I'm not an idiot either. Number seven, you have to understand this is a marathon, not a sprint. It doesn't matter how much money you make or lose in the beginning. You have to think, what can you do one, two, five, 10, 20 years from now? So you always have to continue your education. Do I want you to study incessantly for 20 years? No. Even my most obsessed, most addicted, biggest loser students who have no lives whatsoever, if they study so much, they study everything, they still get everything that I teach. All my DVDs, all my webinars, all the video lessons, and you can't study that more than for like three or four years. Um, that's max. And those are like my obsessed people who study like 15, 17 hours a day. I don't necessarily think you need to do that. I don't want you to burn out. Um, I want you to think about this as a long-term educational process, okay? So whatever you can do, if you can study 30 minutes a day, great. If you can study an hour a day, perfect. If you work a full-time job and you can only study on Saturdays or Sundays, fine. If you have a big family and you got all these kids running around, and you gotta take care of them, wait until they're asleep and study from midnight till one or two in the morning or until you pass out. You just have to you know, understand like the biggest money is not gonna happen all at once. It's gonna happen gradually over the long run in bear markets and bull markets, different hot sectors, different stocks, different patterns, and you should be learning throughout through your good trades and your bad trades. It's kind of like a moving target, right? You're trying to figure out what works best for you and what works best in the market. So ideally, you hone in on what's working best in the market and what's working best for you, and then it all combines, and then, you know, praise be God, like it's beautiful. Um, unfortunately, it takes a while to get there. So most people do not make money at the start. Even Tim Grittani, my top student, who has now made $9 million after starting with just 1,500, he made nothing his first nine months while he was learning and tinkering. But he got better and he's getting better every time. And now in 2019, he actually had his best year. He made nearly $2 million, okay? So not all years are created equal. Have a long-term mindset to your education that will lead to longer-term lasting wealth. 
Leave comments below. Tell me if you're gonna um, you know, follow these rules. Tell me if you have any uh, experience or problems with any of these uh, rules, one through seven. Leave a number. Tell me like which one. They say, oh, I have problems with number four. I have problems with number seven. Or tell me if you have zero problems and you understand that would make me the happiest. But either way, leave some comments. I love reading the feedback and click some links below. I have so many resources to help you. You're not alone in this, okay? I never had a teacher. I never had a mentor. Even though I've made millions, I was very confused, very frustrated for a long time. I don't want that to be to you, right? I want to be the mentor to you that I never had. I don't want you to have the issues that I had. So click the links. I have video lessons. I have blog posts. I have software. I have books. Books. I have so much information for you to help increase your odds of success. Utilize it.